Good evening, everybody. The time, are we live? There we go. Time is now 5.02. I'll call the October 24th, 2023 regular meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Asking for public comment on agenda items other than development or rezoning. Okay, hearing none, we'll go on to approval of the minutes from our October 10th meeting. Make a motion to approve. And I'll second. Okay, I'll call for a vote on that. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. And I vote yes. Number five, approval of bills. We have a batch of bills that need approved. Make a motion to approve. And I'll second. Okay, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. And I vote yes. Third quarter financial presentation. Mark? Thank you. We'll go as long as my voice lasts. Understood. All right, the third quarter financial performance. When we look at uh, revenue comparison to budget, we are pretty much so on track for all the uh, various categories. Uh, the, I know we're going to be a little bit ahead on uh, some of the grants because the state aid for the pension plan came in higher than uh, we had budgeted, which is a good thing. Uh, property tax collections are, are running well again this year. Um, we're running a little bit ahead relative to budget on income tax and I know we're ahead on um, real estate transfer tax. In comparison to last year, uh, we're actually doing a little bit better in rev uh, real estate tax collection. We're going to be down on the grants because we had the $2.9 million uh, ARPA funds that, that had a different name, but it doesn't matter. They were the uh, COVID ARPA funds. Uh, they weren't there. We, they were gone after last year, uh, so that will be down year over year. That's why you see 4.6, 4.1 versus 1.5, uh, and that's 2.9 million of that is due to uh, ARPA funding. So we're in good shape <laughs> revenue-wise. When we look at expenses, we are running pretty well to uh, budget. The uh, every category is under budget, and that's a good thing. Uh, we'll get into a little more uh, analysis uh, in just a second here. Come on. All right, there we go. Uh, when we compare this year to last year, uh, the expenses overall are running about the same uh, proportionately. So we're pretty much so on track as far as that goes. Looking at uh, various comparisons, uh, admin salaries are actually running favorable, and I don't really know why, uh, because it's not for overtime or anything like that. This is almost all salary positions, and uh, everything was filled for the, the year. I'm not quite sure why we're running ahead. Uh, <coughs> Why budget is or why favorable to budget, but it's favorable, so I guess we really don't care too much. Uh, health insurance is running favorable, about 54,000. Other benefits, those are all the uh, workers' comp and uh, FICA taxes and life insurance and all the other stuff. We're running uh, slightly uh, favorable to budget, and legal, we're running slightly favorable to budget. We look at planning. Planning is running uh, fairly well favorable uh, on salaries. That was largely due to the fact that the engineering position was unfilled for about half the year. Uh, they're not doing so hard on, on health insurance. That, and that's an anomaly of uh, a relatively smaller department with a couple of big expenses. There are a couple of uh, employees there that are going through some, some times and uh, we reached stop losses on them, and uh, 
but so they, they used up a good chunk of their uh, budget allocation just for them, and then with the other people that are there, it, it really doesn't help. Overall, though, we're okay with the uh, health insurance, and that's largely due to when we look at the police, they're running favorable on salaries. Part of that is overtime. Part of that is uh, uh, every position is filled, so it's mostly uh, savings on overtime. Health insurance there is almost three quarters of a million to the good, uh, and then uh, other benefits go somewhat hand in hand with the uh, salaries, and then the contribution for fire departments is pretty much on track. We look at public works, salaries there are favorable, uh, almost, or just over $219,000. Uh, health insurance is running a little bit unfavorable. Once again, uh, we've got a couple of stop loss uh, hits in, uh, I know one in streets, and then uh, there's a, uh, not there was a huge expense, but there's only three people in the department, and so therefore, they have a very small pool of uh, health insurance funds. Uh, other benefits are running favorable, and that's somewhat tied to the salaries, and snow removable expense still does not reflect the county aid, which I'm assuming is gonna be coming any time. I know that's been approved. And that was 60 some thousand dollars. Community relations and sustainability, their salaries are running favorable, uh, 24,000. I think part of that is uh, trying to keep positions filled at uh, Milker. It's, you know, hit or miss. The rest of the operating costs are, are also favorable. Uh, <coughs> salaries in uh, uh, Parks and Rec, uh, I think that's a timing with uh, retirement as to why the salaries are over budget. There, none of the positions are uh, uh, over uh, filled. It could also be due to uh, treating the uh, summer help as a straight line expense, meaning that we've only got three quarters of it, although we spent almost all of it already. And then also, once again, they've got the negative uh, health insurance. <coughs> uh, and I, there's nobody there that's on stop loss, but uh, they've had at least one claim that was larger. Fire tax fund, uh, it's tracking pretty well on the revenue, and that goes hand in hand with the uh, revenue projections from uh, uh, the first part of the slides. Salaries are, are way favorable because we had planned to have actual hourly firefighters, and all we got so far is Mike. <laughs> so, and we haven't only had him since July, so <clears throat> we're running re really favorable there. Uh, benefits go hand in hand with that and the capital purchases are, it, it's a timing thing. If we had planned to spend 100,000, we've only spent uh, 82. So we'll be okay there by the end of the year. So revenue, revenues are tracking pretty much so on track. Uh, operating expenses are doing uh, better than budget uh, and better than last year. Uh, that's in part because the city was late billing the uh, treatment. Uh, that's a million dollar bill. And so that will have two million dollar bills in the fourth quarter and it'll come up where it needs to be at the end of the year. Uh, some of the projected spending for the uh, sewer replacements are running uh, slower than expected. That's why the, uh, they're actually showing a slight operating profit uh, whereas they had budgeted a uh, operating loss uh, th through this period. Uh, here we can see uh, actual revenue is 7.6 million. We had uh, budgeted 7.57 and in comparison it was like 7.4 last year. Wages are running slightly better than budget. Uh, maintenance and repairs are doing better than budget. Uh, that one can be scary because those can ratchet up pretty quickly. And uh, utilities are running a little bit over budget. Uh, the system improvements, they had expected to spend $2.3 million. 
they spent just over, just under $2 million so far in the machinery and equipment that is mostly, I believe, the camera truck, uh, what that expenditure is. And the fire tax fund slide should have been up in front. I know I'm out of order and not completely relevant right now. And then the capital plan, we had spent quite uh, plan to spend $19 million. So far, we've committed <coughs> $9.3 million, so we've uh, got an uncommitted balance of just under $10 million. Any questions? Well, thank you, Mark. I just have one question. Do you um, think that the uh, uncommitted will be spent by the end of the year, Mr. Shusesky? No. Shusesky? Okay. There's uh, no way. Okay. If we do spend that money, money, I'm going to have to go find some more money to more cash money <laughs> okay. to pay for everything. Mark, I have a quick question. Um, so, you know, there's people that ask about our deficit, you know, the um, projected deficit or the deficit. And, you know, your presentation paints a, you know, pretty much like it has in recent past, a, you know, relatively good you know, we're on track, et cetera. Um, maybe if you could just quick, you know, kind of give a, your take on the deficit concerns versus what you just presented. Does that tie in with the uncommitted? Um, uh, well, part of, yeah, that would be part of it. Uh, also, too, um, there were some losses in the uh, stock market at the end of the year. Now. <laughs> Some of this becomes a little bit more complicated because the way the actuaries do their thing, uh, they don't recognize all the gains when they happen, but by the same token, they don't recognize all the losses when they happen. They use something that's called smoothing. That's allowed under uh, the rules for government pensions. Uh, so there was, you know, we've softened the blow a bit by this smoothing. Uh, but the pensions were part of it. Uh, there are also, too, periodically changes uh, to the government accounting regulations that could have a positive or negative impact on the financial presentation. And as you enact those, I know this last year we did leases, so we had a recognized lease expense and lease revenue uh, that hadn't been there in the past, and that can contribute to that. You know, Accounting changes contri contribute to uh, deficits. Okay. Okay. Thank you. On that same note, the uh, we had gains in 2000 and 2021 in our pensions. Correct. Yes, and actuarially, they're both they're they're 100 percent funded. And uh, what the, um, the the we have two pension systems, and what are they funded at at this time? Uh, the General employees, it's uh, AFSCME and the uh, non bargained employees, I believe is 112% at the last value. 112% funded. And the police pension was 102. 102, okay. So both are fully funded. Fully funded at this time. Yeah. Uh, and then we're working on putting together a uh, pension plan for the fire department. That's right. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank you. Moving on, we have. Uh, public hearing on subdivision land development plans. The first one is a replot of lands for Anthony Smith, a small subdivision plan. Matt. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, yes, this is a subdivision plan to show the creation of two 4,560 square foot lots from tax parcel 33, 73, 299, 20. One lot is to become an integral part of 3031 Westline Street creating a 0.210 acre lot. The other lot is to become an integral part of 3017 Westline Street to create a 0.419 acre lot along the east line of Westline Street, north of West 32nd Street in Tract 25. Uh, at their regular meeting of Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023, the Mill Creek Township Planning Commission recommended approval of the subdivision with the requirements that both of the parcels become integral parts of their respective adjacent lots. Okay, thank you, Matt. We'll open the hearing now and 
Is there anyone to speak on this small subdivision plan? Sir, if you could come up to the mic, sure. to the podium, and uh, state your name, and then sign in. Sign the paper, too? Yes, sir. I'm Don Thompson. I'm the integral part of 3031 West Line Street. Tony and I were both here at the uh, at the zoning board meeting, but he's back to work now, and I haven't seen him today, so he might be working late. He's in construction. Sometimes he works late. Okay. Yeah. Any uh, any questions for Mr. Thompson? Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Any questions? Matt, anything? Uh, no, no questions on our end. No questions for me. Uh, I think just to make it clear to the board, um, it is taking this one lot owned by Mr. Smith and dividing it in half, uh, one half going to the neighbor to the north and the other half going to the neighbor to the south. Okay. Okay. Very good, sir. Now, all of the uh, survey maps and stuff, uh, do I come back like tomorrow and get those from somebody? Or? So uh, I would recommend calling the Planning and Development Office tomorrow morning. Um, mm -hmm. If it is approved by the board, we'll have to get their signatures on the plans, put some paperwork together. But so could give you a better idea in the morning of when you could potentially pick those uh, up. Not, not in a hurry. I just wondered. I didn't know if yeah. I was going to get them tonight. or No. no. Okay. no it won't be until tomorrow at the early. And then they go down to the... Uh, the Recorder of Deeds house. Office at the courthouse. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this small subdivision plan? Okay, if not, I'll close the hearing and ask for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. And I will second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is a land development plan for Kozik Clark Office Building. Matt? Thank you. Uh, yes, this is a land development plan to show the construction of a 2,198 square foot office building with associated stormwater management facilities and parking lot located along the north line of Village Common Drive, east of Zook Road in Tract 348. Uh, at their regular meeting of Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023, the Milk Creek Township Planning Commission recommended approval of this land development plan. Okay, thank you, Matt. We'll open the hearing on this. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> good evening, Mike good Sanford, evening. 4721 Atlantic Avenue. I'm the surveyor that made the plan here. It's a small office building. Um, I did talk to GPI today about their review. Uh, they should be issuing their approval letter, they said, today or tomorrow. So I think we're obtaining our approvals and look forward to your approval, hopefully, on the plan. Okay, okay thank you. Is there anyone else to speak on this uh, land development plan? And Matt, was this? Uh, yeah, if I may, um, regarding township approvals, there is one final approval to be, um, that needs to be received for this plan from building inspection underwriters. It would just be a final sign off on the um, fire code, uh, the, you know, uh, on whether this plan meets the fire code. It visually does, but we need the final sign off. So I would recommend that if the board chooses to approve this, that they do it on the condition that we receive the approval of the fire code um, requirements before you do so. Okay, Matt, thank you. Any further questions or comments on this? Just, uh, <clears throat> just one on my end, Matt. Yes. Um, is there an existing sidewalk here already? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, there is. Okay. Is there a motion? on this land development plan with the condition on the uh, fire code approval uh, by BIU. Correct. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Okay, number eight on our agenda is revised declaration of easement development with no public facilities. Mr. Shaw. <coughs> yeah, this, uh, this relates to uh, stormwater improvements that are being made uh, in connection with the new Dick Sporting Goods at the mall. Uh, the easement uh, is typically a form document that the supervisors approved a number of years ago, but um, since uh, Kafaro has made some changes to that form, I suggest that it be put on the agenda for specific review and approval uh, by the board. Uh, even though the stormwater improvements are the responsibility of Kafaro, uh, the easement is to allow the township to inspect those improvements and to maintain the improvements should Kafaro fail to do so. Uh, the changes uh, that are being made are consistent with other changes. Uh, that the township has agreed to in the past with respect to uh, mall properties. So my recommendation would be to approve this uh, easement agreement. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shaw. Any questions or comments on this revised declaration of easement agreement? None here. None here. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. And I vote yes. Bids and quotations. The first one is uh, from Jessica Stutzman, Director of Community Relations and Sustainability, 35-gallon recycle <coughs> toter purchase, requesting the purchase of 35-gallon recycle toters locally from Rarick Pacific, uh, which is manufactured here in Erie. This is the same company that manufactured the current 65 and 95 gallon toters that were distributed by advanced disposal. We have a current quote of $50.44 per toter with a minimum purchase quantity of 112. The bin purchase is included in the 2023 public services budget as a capital budget item and is eligible for PA DEP 902 grant reimbursement. She is recommending the purchase of the minimum quantity of 112 toters at a cost of $5,649.28 plus freight cost of $465 for a total of $6,114.28. Is there a motion to approve this purchase of the toters? So moved. Second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. And I vote yes. <coughs> We have a change order number two for Westlake Sewer Project. Rob? Thank you, good evening. Uh, the sewer department is seeking approval of change order number two for the Westlake Pump Station Project. Um, this change order for $2,500 is a relocation of the fence and gate at the site. Um, this will allow our employees here after this project is complete uh, better access to the wet well and the valve pit uh, for any maintenance that may may need done. Um, I do recommend approval of this change order. Thank you, Rob. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. And I vote yes. Air conditioning unit replacement in the police department. Rob? Uh, the air conditioner in the equipment room of the police department is beginning to fail. Um, as a result, the air conditioner is not providing sufficient cooling to the heat-sensitive radio equipment in this room. Um, Admiral Heating provided a quote of $6,200 uh, for a new unit. Uh, funding for this purchase will be taken from the police garage door modification line of the 2023 capital budget, uh, leaving a reserve amount of $43,800, and I recommend approval of this um, HVAC unit. Okay, thank you, Rob. Where is this unit located, do you know? It's, I believe it's above the phone room in the police department. It's in the ceiling, it's an overhead unit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's okay, right. Yeah. thank you. Is there a motion to approve this uh, purchase? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. Yes. Number 10 our, on our agenda is ordinance 2023-7. Mr. Shaw. Yes, uh, ordinance 23, 2023-7 uh, is an ordinance of the Township of Mill Creek, Erie County, Erie County, Pennsylvania, amending Chapter 8, Animals, Chapter 40, Conduct, Chapter 48, Enforcement and Collection Activities, 
in Chapter 137, Vehicles and Traffic of the uh, Mill Creek Township Code. Uh, as was mentioned at the last meeting over the last year, the township has reevaluated the animal enforcement position uh, and its place within the police department. As a result, the township has determined that it is in the best interest of the township to reclassify the position as an animal resource slash code enforcement officer, which would move the position from the police department to the code enforcement department. Uh, this ordinance modifies certain provisions of the township code that were previously amended to allow uh, the officers to the officer to issue tickets relating to parking violations that were with, that were within the purview of the police department. The ordinance also formally recognizes that the animal resource code enforcement officer is authorized to enforce uh, all of the codes that are currently enforced by the code enforcement uh, department, which includes the property maintenance code. Uh, the recommendation would be to approve this ordinance. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? No, but I will make a motion to approve. Thank you, Kim. And I'll second. Call for a vote, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Olette? Yes. I vote yes. We have uh, two new or amended ordinances under review. Mr. Shaw? Uh, yes, first uh, is the SADO, which is uh, the completed uh, the final legal review and we'll be working with the engineering and planning and development office uh, to coordinate a time for their final review. Uh, in addition, uh, we'll be looking at amending chapter 129 taxation, uh, article seven, uh, dealing with the volunteer service tax credit. Uh, this proposed ordinance would permanently reduce uh, the volunteer service tax credit points uh, that are needed to take advantage of the tax credit from 150 points to 75 points. Uh, under this proposed ordinance, the, partici the participation points needed uh, to qualify would be permanently reduced to 75. If you recall, in the past, we've kind of done it on a year to year basis, but it, uh, at this point, uh, we've done it for a sufficient number of years that it makes sense to make it permanent. So that'll be a permanent change uh, to reduce the number of points from 150 uh, to 75 points uh, based upon um, you know, the reduction of, of the number of calls based uh, as a result of uh, some of the restrictions and limitations that have been carried through uh, since COVID on the types of calls they respond to, uh, as well as the expected impact of um, introducing the Mill Creek Township Fire Police, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Mill Creek Township Fire Department uh, into the mix. Uh, and it's assumed that, that they will also be taking uh, many of the calls that some of the volunteers may otherwise have, have joined in on. So. Uh, the recommendation ultimately will be to uh, approve that ordinance at the next uh, at the next meeting. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Number twelve on our agenda is resolution twenty twenty three R thirty nine. Mr. Shaw. Yes, uh, resolution twenty twenty three R thirty nine uh, would approve the adoption and implementation of a language access plan for the township. Uh, it would also appoint a language language access coordinator and, and it would approve the execution of, the, of an agreement with the multicultural uh, resource uh, community center for interpreter services as needed. Uh, a language access plan is a plan that addresses how a public entity uh, that received certain federal funding will ensure that people with limited English proficiency have meaningful access to the, to the recipient's programs. Is required by an executive order issued by President Clinton uh, declaring that Title VI regulations require the recipient of federal funding to take reasonable steps to ensure that persons with limited English proficiency have meaningful access to the recipient's programs. The basic components of the plan includes a needs assessment, uh, procedures that would need to be implemented and training, as well as a mean to file complaints if, if people are having issues. Uh, while the needs of the township for this type of service are not great, there are occasions when limited English uh, proficient persons interact with the township. Uh, the languages often encountered include Spanish, uh, various languages from Eastern Europe, uh, Russian and Ukrainian languages, uh, various languages from Asia, as well as Nepalese. Uh, the plan identifies the actions to be taken in such circumstances, including offering interpreter services provided by the Multicultural Resource uh, Community Center. Uh, the resolution uh, also appoints the Director of Community Relations and Sustainability as the Language Access Coordinator under the Language uh, Access Plan. 
And lastly, the resolution uh, authorizes the chairman to execute an agreement with the Multicultural Community Resource Center to provide interpretation services at the following rates. $50 an hour for scheduled non-emergency advance appointments uh, with a minimum charge of an hour. Uh, and after the hour, there will, the charges will be in increments of 15 minutes. And $65 an hour for appointments after 5.30 on weekends or for emergencies. And uh, there the minimum hour would be uh, one hour uh, in increments of one half an hour uh, after that first hour. And this would also be subject to the solicitor's approval of the terms of that agreement. Uh, we've received their agreement um, and we essentially put it more into our form of the types of agreements we use for professional services. And I'm just, we're just waiting to hear back from them on that, but I don't expect there to be any significant issues. So um, again, that agreement would be approved subject to my review that uh, it's in the format that the township uh, can accept. So my recommendation uh, would be to approve resolution 2023 uh, R39. I, I will note that um, uh, this came up in part as a result of uh, a need uh, uh, by the police department to receive some funds they were going to receive as a result of uh, some uh, programs that they were involved in and, and would be receiving forfeiture uh, monies uh, in excess of $100,000. So it's, I think, well worth implementing this plan. And I think it, even in the end, uh, it's a good idea for the township as, in, in my review of the departments and, and you know, how often they're encountering people with limited English proficiency, it seems to be a growing you know, a growing issue and, and something that's not, you know, really going to go away, so. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2023 R39 as presented? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Olette? Yes. I vote yes. Sewer lien interest forgiveness. Mark? Uh, <clears throat> Within the last several weeks, a property owner had approached the township uh, about waiving a portion of the interest that has accrued on a sewer lien uh, that was filed by the township in 2011 at docket number 2011-50117. Uh, the current owner had purchased the property at a tax upset sale uh, in uh, September of 2017, and the value of the lien at that time was $3,197.04. Uh, subsequent to that date, the new property owner had never received any notice of the lien, uh, as it appears that the address for the billing notices associated with, with the lien uh, was changed in the system to reflect, um, was not changed in the system to reflect the new owner of the property. Uh, the updates on interest apparently were going to someone else. Property owner approaches requesting that the interest from the date that they purchased forward uh, be waived uh, since they had not received any notice or you know, in indications from the township that interest was continuing to accrue. Uh, the value of that interest is $1,419.17. The property owner would still be responsible for paying the $3,197.04, which was the amount due when ownership transferred. Uh, the recommendation uh, would be to approve for giving the interest on the lien that has accrued uh, since uh, September 30 of 2017 provided that the remaining amount of $3,197.04 is paid on or before December 8th of 2023. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Is there a motion to approve this uh, request for interest forgiveness as presented with the condition that the remaining, um, I guess would be the principal? Well, it's principal and interest. It's pr okay, accrued. principal and interest be paid uh, by de December, which is within 45 days, be yes. paid in full. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. And I will second. Okay, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. I vote yes. Fire Protection, Ambulance, and Emergency Services Agreement. Mr. Shaw. Yes, uh, before you is the proposed agreement with Westridge Fire Department pursuant to Section 5527E of the Mill Creek Township Code. The main purpose of the agreement is to integrate the Mill Creek Township Fire Department with the operations of the township's uh, four volunteer fire departments. Uh, the agreement was drafted in accordance with the various requirements of the township code and has been presented to each of the volunteer fire department departments in the township, specifically to Bell Valley, 
to Kearsarge, to West Ridge, and to West Lake. To date, only West Ridge has agreed to the fire department agreement, having voted to approve it on October 3rd, 2023. Uh, to date, the township has not received any feedback from the other three uh, township volunteer fire departments. Um, one of the key items in the agreement is the ability of the new Mill Creek Township Fire Department to use uh, the firehouse facilities and apparatus of the volunteer fire departments. In this case, execution of this agreement with, with rest, West Ridge will allow the Mill Creek Township Fire Department to use the West Ridge facilities and apparatus uh, as soon as uh, they staff up. Uh, presently, it is expected that the Mill Creek Township Fire Department will be staffed by the end of November of this year and will, will need use of the West Ridge facilities and apparatus at that time. The agreement also addresses various fire department related issues, such as volunteer department response requirements, uniform specifications for acquisition and maintenance of equipment and apparatus, recruitment and retention, training and budgeting. The agreement also addresses funding issues of the volunteer departments, including the township's willingness to fund capital purchases as allowed by the fire tax funds and appropriate monies to the volunteer departments as the township determines. The agreement is structured in a way to allow the township and West Ridge to execute this agreement even though the other departments have not yet agreed to the agreement. The recommendation would be to approve this agreement uh, with the West Ridge Fire Department. I have a question. So does this agreement <coughs> supersede the current agreements that we have with the various departments or is this in addition to? This would supersede the prior agreement. So uh, by West Ridge agreed to this and the township executing it would effectively, effectively terminates the prior agreement with West Ridge. Okay. The other three agreements obviously still remain in place because none of the other fire departments have signed on to this yet. Okay, thank you, Mark. And we structured the agreement also to allow one at a time to sign up, figuring we would run into some delays or timing issues so that it, it would make sense uh, at this point, given the, the potential need coming up in, you know, by the end of November and, you know, since our next meeting isn't until November 14th, it would make sense to kind of at least have that in place so that we're right. prepared and, and have facilities and apparatus ready for the fire department when they're up, up and running and ready to go. Okay. Chief Cliff, do you have any other further comments on this? Or? Uh, no, I think uh, I'm just very excited to get things rolling and I appreciate Westbridge's willingness to work with the township to give us um, very uh, great conditions to work with as far as apparatus and uh, uh, facilities. So very appreciative that they're working with us. Okay, very good. All right, is there a motion to approve this uh, agreement as presented? I'll make that motion. And I will second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. I vote yes. We have a sidewalk deferral request. Mr. Waldinger. Thank you. Yes, this is a request for a sidewalk deferral for a new home being constructed at 5913 Hillhaven Drive. Uh, the developers are the owners, Ryan and Jennifer Butters. Uh, they propose to build a home there. There are currently no sidewalks in the area, and so they are asking at this time for a deferral of the requirement to build sidewalks. They have um, submitted a properly completed form on the township's approved form, and so I would recommend uh, that the board approve the sidewalk deferral for 5913 Hillhaven Drive. Okay, thank you, Matt. Is there a motion to approve this sidewalk deferral request? So moved. Second. Thank you. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. I vote yes. Treasurer communications. Nothing further now. Okay, thank you, Mark. Looks like we have a Department transfer request public works Rob. Yes. Thank you. Um, I am requesting uh, the transfer of Zach Zachary Johnson um, from the Parks and Rec Department um, to the Streets Department. Uh, there will be no change in his salary. Um, he will have a start date of October 30th and Zach has been a laborer with the Parks and Recreation uh, since May of 2023 
and he will be making a lateral transfer um, to the streets maintenance department. And I recommend his transfer. Thank you, Rob. Is there a motion to approve this uh, transfer? So moved. Second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Olette? Yes. I vote yes. We have a hiring request, new hire approval for building maintenance labor. Rob? Yes. Um, I am requesting approval of the hiring of Sean Zimmerman um, as a building maintenance laborer. Um, he will have a start date of November 6, 2023. Uh, he will have a starting rate of $20.56 per hour. Uh, Sean currently works for Waste Management and works routes in Mill Creek for the last two and a half years. Uh, prior to that, he was a waste transfer senior operator for three years. He has a Class B CDL with tanker and air brakes endorsements. Um, he has also been a tool and die apprentice for Matrix Tool and Custom Tool for three years. Um, Sean has experience with pumps, welding, and laying pipe along with some general construction work. Um, I recommend his hire. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to approve the hiring of Sean Zimmerman in building maintenance? So moved. And I will second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. I vote yes. And we have a new hire request for sewer maintenance. Rob? Um, I am requesting the hiring of Kelvin Eddy um, as a sewer maintenance laborer. He will have a start date of Monday, October 30th, 2023. He will have a starting rate of $20.56 per hour. Uh, Kelvin currently works for Dahl Kemper Landscaping and Contractors for the last three years. Uh, previously, he worked at Carmuse Erie Sand and Gravel as a laborer for three years. Uh, prior to that, he worked for the Village of Sherman as a wastewater operator uh, for two years. He has a Class A CDL with tanker and hazmat endorsements. Um, he also has experience in masonry and welding, and I recommend his hire. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Is there a motion to approve the hiring of Calvin Eddy in sewer maintenance? So moved. Second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? <coughs> yes. I vote yes. Okay, next we have a request from Diane Lyons in administration uh, regarding the part-time police dispatch wages. Speak on that if you want. Okay, Kim, go ahead. You sure. want to handle that? Yeah, um, the Mill Creek Police oversee um, one of the most important positions in the township, and that is the role of the dispatcher. Uh, the men and women who serve as dispatchers are the calm in a crisis. Um, the uh, part-time dispatch work, uh, work wages have not been increased in a number of years, and uh, we're looking to make those uh, wages a little bit more competitive. Um, so the part-time police dispatcher wages um, would be as follow. In training, um, it would be $15 an hour. After training is complete, it would be $16 an hour. And then those with three or more years of experience would be up in, uh, would be um, $18 an hour. And then um, there will be um, a number of dispatchers that will be increased to $18 an hour because they have, uh, they have over three years of service. So I'd like to make a motion to approve um, the wage increases for one of these very important parts of our township. Okay, okay thank you. I will second. Okay, Dan, you'll second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. I vote yes. Okay, next on our agenda is the virtual PSAT stormwater conference. It sounds pretty exciting. It does, riveting. <laughs> what yep. do you got, Matt? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, this request is from Environmental and Stormwater Program Manager Gene Clement. Uh, he would like permission to attend the 2023 PSATS virtual stormwater conference uh, related to our MS4 permit. It will be held November 8th and 9th for a total cost of $250. Uh, the amount will be paid out of the planning and development training line item. And I would recommend that Mr. Clement be permitted to attend the conference. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to approve this uh, conference attendance? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll <clears throat> second. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. I vote yes. Next up, we have a 
notary license education request from Jessica Stutzman, a director of community relations and sustainability. Uh, PAN membership and notary license education for employee Monica Ziegler. Public notaries protect residents and consumers from fraud and identity theft as they are a witness to authentic signatures of important documents. Jessica is recommending uh, the purchase of the PAN notary and online education, which includes all the essentials of the first time notary appointment package. Upon completion of the course, Monica will receive a certificate to use with the rotary application, notary application to the state. The cost is $445.50 for education and $110.75 for supplies. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, notary license education course for Monica Ziegler. I'll second. Okay, thank you, Dan. Call for a vote, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Olette? Yes. And I vote yes. Mr. Chairman, I would like to say I did not know that the township offered notary services until I started working here. I don't know how I did not know that. Maybe everyone else does, but there's a lot of things I've learned in the last two years. <laughs> yes. I think we have a notary present tonight. Oh, yes, that's right, as well as Cheryl Williams. Cheryl, thank you for our township secretary. being a notary. Appreciate that. And uh, next up, we have the executive sessions of October 12th and 19th. We discussed litigation related to orphans court petition, ordinance enforcement, right of way construction. And is that a stand tech claim change order? You tried to slip yes. me up, didn't you? <coughs> didn't you, Lydia? And I caught it. Real estate related to parks and rec facilities and the lease of township property. And I'm proud to announce trick-or-treat hours will be a week from today. Yes. Kim, you have your costume ready? I, I do. Okay. October 31st, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the township. Go out and buy your candy. Get it ready. Mark, any further? Uh, just uh, that, uh, that we did, in fact, file the uh, petition with respect to uh, getting permission to sell the Erie Golf Course. Uh, we filed that on, on Friday. Um, and uh, we did get a letter from the Attorney General indicating that they were not objecting uh, to that. So hopefully, uh, I think we have a hearing scheduled for December 8th, at December 8th uh, uh, to uh, go before the court with the petition. So, Is that a uh, hearing that anyone can attend? Yeah, it'll be at the courthouse. At the courthouse. Do we know what judge it's in front of? Okay. 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 Thank you, Lydia. We have a special guest with us. His first time here. Will be here throughout the rest of the uh, school year. I understand. Student Ambassador Anthony Madursky. Like to welcome you to the meeting. Okay, and um, the floor is yours if you'd like to introduce yourself and report anything you'd like to report. Chief Cliff, could you give him the, um, yeah. thank you so there much. There we go, microphone. There we go. So as Mr. Chairman, Chairman said, my name is Anthony Madursky. I am a senior at McDowell High School. Just a couple of things I do, extracurriculars if you, if you will. I work part time at Jersey Mike Subs. Impeccable subs, might I add. <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a member of McDowell's Math Club. I'm the president of McDowell's Astronomy Club, along with other, other activities. My goal, my goal after high school is to attend the United States Air Force Academy and study physics. Um, I decided to become a student ambassador because I was interested in learning more about government on the local level, and I hope that will lead me into a future of learning more about government on the state and national levels. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Thank Appreciate you. that. Welcome, looking, Anthony. Looking forward to seeing you. You'll be attending our uh, 5 p.m. meetings. Of course, yes. I understand. Okay, it great. Just, so the way things work out with me and the other student ambassador, just if yeah. she prefers it to be the morning meetings, I prefer to be the evening meetings. So. Okay, good. It works out for both. Awesome. We are so happy to have a, a Trojan here. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Go Trojans. <laughs> All right, citizens to be heard. Would anyone like to be heard this evening? 
No. Okay. Can't say we didn't give you the opportunity. All right. Very good. Uh, I'll call for an adjournment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before, oh, yes. um, I just would like to uh, make note that um, the, I know our police department will be out and about on Halloween. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I know that they love being able to see the kids in costume and they'll be driving by and feel free to, right. you know, flag them down and see them. They love interacting with the kids. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah they'll be, great. yeah, they'll be out and about. I believe they're passing out candy too. So if you see a cop car, run to it, not away. Right, and the police... Maybe the, not in front of it, though. Wait. The, the, right, and the fire department normally is out and about, correct? Yes, they are. Each, yep. each oh. department is, has uh, a presence in the neighborhoods normally, so... Yes, we sure do. Okay. I'll be, be out as well. So you'll be out, oh, you'll as, be well? out as well? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, be safe out there, everybody, and have fun. Yeah, very good. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. Second. Okay. And we are adjourned at 5.53 p.m. Thank you.